It's your guy, Derek420 Colorado, coming at you live and direct back from the lovely and amazing Dream Farm. We're back from our vacation. Let's see if I can get this thing right. I don't know why. So how? Let's go flip this. This one. So if we go like There we go. There we go. Hi, baby. Oh, uh, babe, can you do me a favor and write down... The members of the week and plant of the week yeah. for me. So what's up, everybody? What's happening? What's going on? What's up? What's happening, Bob? What's up, my dude, Dirk? Y'all check out Dirk's dies. Y'all check it out. He's the lovely man responsible for this tie-dye tapestry that you always see hanging behind me and some of my shirts. DirkDyes.com. DirksDyes.com, yes. What's up, Bob? What's up, Dirk? What's up, Lex? What's up, Albert? How in the world is everybody doing today? Still off the cigs. And I'm reducing the amount of uh, reliance that I'm having on these uh, Nick sticks here. So that's always good. What up, River? Babe, I'll also take a do to. What's up, Tim? All my peoples. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get to a quick little um, a little dab in here at 420. I also, uh, as y'all, most of y'all know, we y'all we use the uh, DankHankGlass.com, Hank Snell's Triple Donut Nectar Collector, here on all of our Talk About It Tuesdays. Uh, I have gotten a little bit of feedback from Hank, saying that some folks have um, have cracked the tip. On their, on their nectar collectors, and that's my fault. I have never really kind of gone over the proper technique to heat up your nectar collector. And so um, what I'm going to do right now is kind of give you guys, I know I'm probably going to go past 420, but that's okay. It's all, uh, it's all good. Uh, so what you want to do, what happens, and the reason that gra glass cracks, okay, um, is rapid temperature fluctuation. It either goes from being really hot to really cold, or goes from really cold to really hot. And so what you want to do is you always want to make sure that you are doing it slowly. The slower you warm up the glass, the better. And so while it might not always come across on the uh, on the lives here, that's why I always start out pretty far away from the tip of the nectar collector. I usually start out pretty good to where it's just the very top of that flame, to where it's getting it warmed up a little bit. And then you'll see me actually go in to heat it all the way up. Okay, just put it on the ground. Uh, to heat it all the way up. That way, it doesn't actually heat up too fast and develop a crack. Uh, so, for anybody out there that has a nectar collector of any kind, it's a borosilicate nectar collector like the Nankank ones, heat it up slowly. The slower, the better. 100 viewers. Bow, 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 bow. Let's do a dab. <laughs> oh yeah and always it makes me warm you think you could turn this heater off too baby I know I'm having you do a lot <laughs> <coughs> Farm manager River <coughs> was upset at the size of the dabs I was doing. He said, "Now that I've quit smoking cigarettes, they're not as fun to watch for the for the viewers." He said it was. Uh, he wants to see back to the big dabs, so <coughs> we'll do another one <coughs> towards the end, and we'll do a sign off dab that's <coughs> real big. <coughs> oh, okay. So what's up, everybody? What's happening? What's going on? How have all my folks been? As most of you know, we haven't been here at the Dream Farm for the last nine days or so. We uh, took off and went on a little Puerto Rican uh, vacation. It was super fun. We've been, I've been going down there for a long time. Uh, now that uh, my wife and I are together, she's been going out there with me. It's um, it's just one of our, it's our lovely little getaway spot. What's wild is, I'm not sure where you're watching from in the country, but my guess is 
Wherever you are, it's been cold as hell for the last couple of days. We managed to get out of here, and it was the perfect and most right time that we ever could have because it's been negatives and cold and blowing snow and all that stuff. Here, where we were, it was beaches and clear skies. It was awesome. We did a uh, bioluminescence bay tour, um, did some snorkeling, did some surfing, did a lot of eating. You know, it's funny, I can't, ever, I can't remember who it was, but uh, we, uh, there was a comedian at some point in time in my life that I saw do a joke that was, why do we go on vacation? What the hell are we doing? We go on vacation to go eat. <laughs> and I've always found that funny, because every time I go on vacation, I'm always like, man, we sure did do a whole lot of eating. So, it was super awesome, it was badass, shout out to my good friends Ian and Leslie Shanks, they were able to come out there, my homeboy Michael Kilkenny, his buddy Jack Uni, all my Puerto Rican family and friends, love y'all so much, it was such a good time, and we'll be back again soon. So, that's, uh, that's gonna bring me back to here at the Dream Farm, we are back, we are ready to lock in, get started, and start to get new strains out to everybody. Um, I am uh, so excited, super happy, and super glad to be bringing everybody a lot of the uh, fan favorites from 2023, including Lime Time is going to be brought back to its F2 or F3, uh, bring it up to F3, going to release it for a full strain because everybody loved it. Probably going to be doing it with the TMMF, TMFF and the Double Bear as well. Uh, folks just seem to really, really enjoy each one of the freebies that we put out this year. Uh, so, uh, we're going to be doing that. Going to be looking at some new stuff. I've got uh, a couple of uh, Rock Bud drops from this year that I'm going to be integrating into the new stuff that I've got going. So, we've got uh, we've got all kinds of stuff coming down the pipe, folks. We've got uh, Farm Manager River down there hunting the Chamula Skunk. We'll be on the lookout. Maybe not this year. Probably not this year. But we are in the works, and it's happening. So, um, today's Talk About It Tuesday was inspired... And brought to us by, oh yeah, oh hey, 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 huh. hold on. So we're going to be talking about the uh, lighting today. The reason we're going to be talking about lighting is because we've got a pretty good and awesome announcement type situation. Going to tease something for you guys, so stay tuned to the end for that. Um, but yeah, uh, so <laughs> who, if, uh, who was here and who, um, who saw the live from last Tuesday? <laughs> I was uh, enjoying the local libations, as I had mentioned, and I think somebody told me I was supposed to do some giveaway stuff, so I forgot. I completely forgot that I had said that. So, uh, Vanilla Slushy is coming. Yes, it will be. That's, that's going to be in the very first round of the new releases for 2024. Uh, so, yes, Sarah, I'm sure, and if you did, Mikey Dubs, if y'all did, y'all got to see a... Um, yeah, yeah, Boston, you know what's up, Boston, George knows what's up. Yeah, y'all got to see just kind of a little, uh, you know, uh, a little in, uh, in-depth and look at, uh, kind of, you know, behind the scenes of the behind the scenes, which doesn't have anything to do with growing, it was just me out there and, you know, on the island having fun and, uh, being, uh, being, being silly. So, uh, let's see here, I tell you what, um, alright, let's see. So, let's go back through here. Let's see here. Let's see. Let me just check. Okay. So, who all saw? I'm going to go back and look. We're going to give... Let's see here. Yes, Encrusted Grape will also be coming back, Jerry. 100%. Let's see. Uh, Sarah. Daniel. Those two people that I just mentioned, because my AD kick in, I can't even say who it was. Those two people are going to get two. Uh, there you are going to get free packs. Three, for two. What are your last names? I can't even tell. I don't even know, because I don't know what I just said. Sarah and somebody else. Daniel. Daniel. Sarah and Daniel. Sarah Creaseman and Daniel Lee, I think. We're going to shoot y'all some free seeds, because I like you, because you tuned in on my uh, impromptu Drunken Live from Puerto Rico. <laughs> uh... So, uh, so yeah, we're going to be talking about, oh, wait, shh, hold on. I got a whole bunch of members of the week 
and a whole bunch of plants in the week. This is this is like for the last like three weeks, I think. I didn't do it the last time. I didn't do it last week, and so I had to get caught up. It took me like an hour. Okay. Um, what? I can't read my wife's writing. Uh, plant of the week. We got Brian Amoson. Brian Amoson, you win plant of the week honors. Todd Peck. Todd Peck, you win plant of the week. The week honors. Rob Serafin, you win Plant of the Week honors. Uh, Michael McKnight, for your frosty grape milk, you win Plant of the Week honors. Members of the Week, we've got AJ Knapp, we've got Aaron McEwen, we've got JP Porter. Y'all are members of the Week. So, reach out to me, let me know, make sure I got y'all's address and all that good stuff. Uh, congratulations for everybody putting out those super fire, awesome, amazing. It was super, hey, 145 viewers. Hell yeah, fuck yeah, let's go. Um, uh, we, I was able to almost on a impromptu basis, you know, because I got friends down there in Puerto Rico saying, they're like, hey, you know, what have you been doing? And of course, tell everybody, hey, you know, I'm doing Dream Beans. And so all I had to do just to find a great example was go straight to the group and literally scroll down just a little bit. Even though sometimes it was the first post. Y'all are doing such a good job and making me look so good. 150 viewers. There we go. Let's go. Uh, we're just, I mean, I could, I, I just cannot be happier and cannot be prouder of the work that y'all are doing. Because as our great-grandmother Mossy from autoflower.net always would tell us, the grower makes the breeder. And so y'all definitely do that consistently, making me look good. I love it. Okay, so uh, this week's Talk About It Tuesday, we're going to get into a little bit of lighting discussion. What do you mean, Derek? What are you talking about, Derek? How the hell do we talk about lighting? There's so much stuff. PPFD and PAR, DLI, and uh, UMOS, Pajul. What is it? What does it all mean? It can be complex, folks. It can be intimidating, and it can be scary. I'll let you know. It is such scariness and such complexity and such just... It, ugh. It makes my brain hurt. That is one of the areas in cultivation that I have always deferred to on somebody that knows more than I do. Okay? And, and when it comes to lighting, it's not hard. I know, I know the basics. Okay? I know, I know what the scientific, you know, reasonings and the biological processes, what they do, those kinds of things. But when it comes to the actual technology side of lighting, oof, boy, it, it, it changes so quickly. They're doing such good works moving forward. Um... You know, about, you know, the, the uh, lights are kind of like computers, man. You get one today in six months, it's obsolete, you know. Not obsolete because it'll still work but in both cases, but, you know, obsolete to the degree in comparison to the newest and latest and greatest, okay? Uh, so, as most people are commenting down below, our lovely Mo Harrister has decided to take the plunge and go ahead and get into the lighting game. Not necessarily a game, Per se, but he wants to be the premier, um, you know, lighting consultant and lighting vendor for not only Dream Beans but for whoever else wants. And I'm going to tell y'all, folks, we're not going to. I'm not going to get too far into it because we're going to do an official talk about it Tuesday with release dates and all that good stuff for everybody. If you have questions about getting a light, if you're interested in a light right now, if this is the time where you're thinking about upgrading or you're thinking about maybe getting into the cultivation hobby, here we are, and you need a light. Get with Mo Harrister now. Shoot him a DM. He'll be able to go over all of the different price points, all of the different, uh, all the different models that he's going to be bringing, um, and all that good stuff. But what I can tell you is we are going to have an in-house, trusted, extreme. It's good. These are these are uh, these are going to be some of the best lights that, that 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 you can get out there, and the price is. I'm really, I'm, I'm really gonna have to do some more deep dives into it because he's actually, I mean, he's he's able, he's being able to do it for lower than I thought would have ever been possible, and still maintaining the um, integrity of having great diodes, great drivers, having the the, the you know removable uh, drivers, all of the features and things that we all want and love and need. Um, he's he's doing it. He's doing it right. Um, so, yes, Steve, I sure would like to talk about my light setup that I have. <laughs> Mine's a little bit different, okay? I run all of the, most of the seeds that I have in a light-assisted greenhouse, which is my LAG. 
And what it does is it functions as a light, uh, as a greenhouse during the day with clear panels that allow light sunlight to go through. Then at night, I use Foch, F-O-H-S-E, Foch lighting. I use the 06 eyes that are specifically designed for greenhouses. Now, I'll let you know, Foch is not, they are the highest end as far as price count goes. Uh, so I don't generally recommend them for most home growers and uh, home cultivation folks, uh, just because the, the price is usually prohibitive. They are the best on the market, in my opinion, but the price is prohibitive. Um, up until now, up until Mo has really came up, I, my, my, my need, initial and immediate reaction to when somebody asks what lights is HLG, Horticulture Lighting Group. They have been at the forefront of the industry providing some of the top-notch lights that are available for us uh, with great integrity in their products and all that stuff. What I can say is that Mo is putting out qu the same quality but for better price. Liter literally, I've looked at all the stuff and all the little numbers that I know, the basic stuff that I know, and look, when you put look at them on paper, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be real hard to tell the difference between um, uh, something like an HLG or a... Uh, Fluence. Fluence has some good uh, low bar lights. Uh, so, yeah, so lighting wise, and, and, and the, the, it, again, it, it brought me to the point of talking about this because it's one of the more common questions that we get, which is what light do I use? And even a little bit more specific than that, is X light good? Ah. Uh, it gets to be really complex in what you're actually looking for, okay? Generally speaking, and for everyone out there, please get a piece of paper and a pencil right now. I'm actually going to do a dab to give everybody a chance to grab a little piece of paper, a pencil, uh, do a voice note, something, because I'm going to give you the formula for determining how much light you need. Okay, so go grow. I'm giving everybody a little bit... Uh, of a uh, homework assignment here. So go grab your pens, go grab your pencils. If you forgot your dabbers, go, go, go grab those too. This is like class. So we're gonna give you the formula for determining how many watts of light you need for your growth space. But I want everybody to write it down because it's important and it's a, it's a very easy, <coughs> it's a very easy formula to to get. Um, so well, we're going to do another little dab here. We're going to do multiple dabs and smaller coughing sessions. So I don't uh, feel like I've got tuberculosis and need to go to the hospital. All right, here we go. Hopefully by Hobie Ralph. Ralph Oreo. Hopefully you're out there doing dabs with me. They're getting ready to get up here. They're almost <laughs> they're almost up here. They got another week and a half before they'll be up here. <laughs> okay. So, did everybody get a pencil, a pen, a piece of paper? Scrawl it on your wall. Poke, prick your finger. Go to your notes in your phone. Yeah, as Vanna wife decided to. Chime in. That was a good suggestion, babe. <coughs> 35 watts per square foot. 35 true watts from the wall. Not what your light has printed on it. For some just wild reason, and I get why they did it, the premier mid-level market light folks Spider Farmer and Mars Hydro specifically got into this fucking trend, got into this stupid thing of putting numbers that were 10x the true watts on their lights. So if they had a 100 watt LED, they were putting it was the Mars Hydro Super Boof 1000. Ugh. It has caused so much confusion, so many underlit plants. I mean, I don't know how, I still to this day people say, how, how many... What kind of lights do you have? Oh, I got a thousand watts. It's a Spider Farmer SF one hundred or one thousand. No, that's a hundred watt light. Okay, there's a hundred. There's ways that you can do it. There's a lot of um, products nowadays that are what's called a smart outlet. 
what you do is you plug that into the regular outlet, and then you plug whatever you got into it, and whatever it says, it'll say 100, it'll say 1,000, it'll say 2,500. Whatever it says on there, that's how many true watts at the wall you're pulling. Watts at the wall, that's what that means, okay? And so, yes, and while I understand why they did it, I get it, they were taking advantage of a still young and, uh, you know, emerging market and uneducated marketplace, and people were just, I, I get it, but they screwed, they, 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 they they did a disservice to the industry, in my opinion. And so it's been, it's taken us here now, you know, goddamn, 10 years or better to where people are finally understanding what true watts are and what watts per wall. What's the wall mean? And not to look at those little numbers on the light. Okay, now, companies like HLG, they did it right. Like HLG 650R is about 650 watts. It's like, I think it's like 642 or something. Okay. So, again, that's just uh, kind of just the different brands and how, they, how they're actually doing it, right? So, um, you want to, uh, yes, uh, you can use them to have you tell amps as well. So, you're not overloading your breaker, bro break breaker box. Um, yeah, George, it's probably somewhere around there. But then again, who knows? There's just been so many of these light companies that realize they can get three components, a driver, a frame, and a damn diode uh, layout, and bam, they've got a light. And then they then it was up to them to try to do whatever they could to snake oil sales people into buying them. And that's why, it, you know, that's why I have specifically and very vehemently absolutely rejected any kind of sponsorship opportunities from Mars Hydro or Spider Farmer. Those folks have, their, their product is so cheap, they are able to give out hundreds of lights for free and not have anybody buy a single one of them if they it's 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 crazy so you'll never see me ever recommending those just because while i do understand they offer a budget a more budget friendly option in some cases sometimes cheaper isn't always better okay uh so 35 watts per square foot okay so what is that so it's a very very easy <clears throat> Yeah, that, Mark, I guess you didn't hear the first part where I said I don't know enough about lights. <laughs> That's why I defer to people with more knowledge than I do, like my dude, Mo. Mo Harrister is going to be, again, providing top quality, top shelf, top tier lights uh, at a price that is more affordable than anything else on the market at the, at the moment. There's my guy. <sighs> um, and uh, so, so getting a uh, floor surface. Yes, Stephen. No, your canopy surface. That it, whatever your canopy is. That's going to be your square footage, your canopy square footage uh, times, thir times 35. Okay, so if you've got a 4x4, four four, okay, you're going to have 16 square feet. Uh, oh. Hi, Blue Boss. It's okay. You're going to have 16 square feet, 35 times 4. It's about, four, I don't know, 500 watts or something like that. And so um, getting an HLG 650R is what you usually, that's about what you're going to need to adequately and properly light a 4x4. Four and I see so many people running 200 watts, 250 watts, 300 watts, and it's just not enough light. It's just not enough power, especially when you're running multiple plants. In my opinion, if you have a lower wattage light and if you're running um, a, uh, a smaller space or a, you're, you're running a lower wattage light and you're underlit for your space, don't try to grow more plants. Grow one freaking plant. Okay, if you've got a 200 watt light and a 4x4, don't grow more than one plant. All right, don't grow more than two because that plant, again, is going to take up itself. It's going to take up, you know, three or four square feet, three square feet. You know, you're going to have, an, you know, if it's adequately lit, adequately nutrient loaded and adequately, adequately watered. Okay, and so if um, it's going to take that up and so a 200 watt light, you know what I mean? That's that's you can use that on one plant. And so you're going to get a lot, much, you're going to get a much better quality and in a lot of cases, more yield than trying to grow more plants. Because what you're doing is you're using the PPFD, the photon, the potential photon flux density. The, what does that mean, Derek? That is the amount of light that that plant can use for its internal biological processes and to create photosynthesis and to use that light to photosynthesize. Okay. That's what the that's what PPFD means is how much light that light, that that it can use. Okay, so if you've got one plant, you've got a light source here, and it's giving you a thousand PPFD. Okay, 
And then you move and you put two plants in there. Well, but the, the reason that these, the, the wall, I'm going to show y'all, just but y'all know, the reason that these walls, look, that's an HLG. <laughs> I run HLGs. That's, I, have a, I have two HLG 650Rs and I have two HLG uh, 100Rs. Uh, uh, so HLG has been my brand, okay? So um, for anyone that was asking that. But the reason that the walls are reflective or white inside these tents is because the light reflects off there, goes back into the plant. Well, if I've got a plant here, okay, and I've got one right next to it, all the light rays that go down on this side, they get bounced off and they're absorbed by that plant. And so it's taking much, it's taking a lot more light to grow two plants than it is to grow one plant. All right. You're going to have a exact, there you go, Chad. Exactly. Using, rocking out an HLG 200 on one plant, you're going to have plenty of light. You're going to have, you, everybody's seen your plants, Hell, You know, we know. You're going to have super dense nugs. You're going to have what you're looking for. Okay. That a lot of the, problems and a lot of issues that I see, um, you know, for folks uh, that are not just brand new growers. These are folks that are, have two or three grows under their belt. They can't seem to get past that, that, okay, well, I mean, I don't know why these aren't getting that big, or I don't know why, my, my man, I see a lot of nugs that are real dense, but I can't get mine there. It's just that seem to have that issue getting over that, that, that next hump. Eight times out of 10, it's light. It's light. I see probably 60 to 70, I'd say even 80% of the folks right now that are out there and they're growing, they're underlit. Just like there's 80% of the folks that are out there growing in deep water culture that are underpowered with air. Okay, it's a severe epidemic almost in our, in, uh, in our community. That it takes light to grow these plants, all right? I saw it, Sarah, I seen the 158. Um, that it takes, it takes a lot of light to grow these plants and to grow them to the, okay, look back up. You can grow bud with an arrow garden. I can't remember who it is in here that, that actually does a crazy good job. Way better than I ever thought would have uh, been possible with one of those small little arrow gardens. It's a small little aeroponic, uh, little aeroponic garden with, I mean, just no light at all. I think it might be 15 or 20 watts at the most, at the most for the whole thing. And so... Hey, Todd, Todd Peck, by the way, it's no, it's no shock that you just won plant of the week with that beautiful hanging, super spinning. That was good, man. It was super awesome plant of the week, and you're rocking out with enough light, okay? These th that I can almost guarantee every single one of the folks that's won plant of the week uh, for the last year has probably been around or above 35 watts per square foot. If I, if I just, and I, this is not, I'm just guessing. I'm just guessing. I just know what I know, okay? And... <clears throat> um, and so, yes, there are, um, we're doing, you know, we're, we are consistently trying to evolve, uh, light technology and lighting technology. And a lot of that's coming in the form of the diodes. And I know for a fact that Mo is doing a damn good job on making sure that his diodes are top quality, top band diodes that are, you know, in your top quality lights. Uh, I just don't know, uh, who he had to, you know, perform special favors for, to get the prices that he's able to get and get them to, uh, to out to our, to our guys. So, uh, to our folks. So, um, uh, be on the lookout y'all again, get with Mo, get with Mo Harrister. If you're looking for a light, even if you're not looking for a light, he's going to be pissed that I said that, uh, get with Mo Harrister and, you know, get with him and see what's, uh, see what's up, you know, and he's the man and he's going to be our official resource when it comes to all things lightings, because he is again, more educated and he is in that world right now. I mean, he is spending a lot of his time right this very minute and these days actually getting all of the things. And he's doing, like I said, he's doing it right, y'all. He's um, he's really doing it right. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Greg. Appreciate it, man. It's 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 uh, it's super awesome. And, uh, you know, because y'all know him. And again, Mo subscribes to my philosophy and I would never, ever have, I mean, if he had created a light and he did, we wouldn't, wasn't a good dude and a solid dude and I wasn't 100% confident just like my other vendors that I support here at the Dream Bean Support Center. Uh, I know if you guys ever have any issues, questions, comments, concerns, he's going to be there, okay? And these, you know, these are the things that make good business people and make folks successful on our end and on your end, okay? As people that are dedicated, passionate, and willing to go uh, the extra step to make sure that all of their customers are taken care of. So um, it's going to be it's going to be super super awesome. All right. Um, what the hell else is I going to do? 
uh, talk about light. We're talking about light. Uh, let's see. I gotta, I'm probably gonna drop another strain, uh, next week. I think I'm gonna have to harvest a couple of these and see. Uh, I, there, there, we got one, we got, we got a potential candidate, uh, for a drop next week. So, uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, uh, let's see, let's see what else we got. Making sure you have enough light is super important. Uh, oh, also, hey, y'all, everybody told me to go get shirts. We got them. They're on the site and they're still sitting in boxes. <laughs> so y'all go get you a shirt. Uh, I may do a, uh, I may, I may do a, uh, price reduction on the shirts maybe just to get them because i because we're 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 slowly but surely um running out of space because our big house isn't built yet and so anytime we're doing stuff nowadays it seems like we have to take something else out or move something around so <laughs> so yeah y'all go get your shirts um let's see uh you took talking about together oh i was talking about no i'm not gonna put together my own brand of light mark that's again that's gonna be that's gonna be definitely uh, Mo's area of expertise from now and moving forward, <laughs> because that's like I said, he knows way more about it, and he's deep down into all of the aspects and all of the current technology and all of the things that are going on in the um, in the lighting world. So it's super awesome to see the folks you know that like that and folks that are you know using some of my stuff to breed now. Man, it's it's. I'm really enjoying where the first uh, where the first year of Dream Beans has gone. You know what? I... Hey, babe. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Today might be our one year anniversary. What? Yeah. Go back and look for me. It's it's close. It's somewhere around to it. From we have. Uh, go back and see when we made the very first uh, the first sale okay. to Michael Gratz, still in the group. Still rocking it out. Okay, uh, hold on, hold on. Dream Beans first customer. Uh, so yeah, we're we're right here. We're right here at the one year mark. So yes, we will definitely. I need to look at that, find out when that is. We will be doing a drop if it's even if it's not this week, but we'll be doing a drop. I've got one specifically for our one year anniversary that I've been holding around that y'all are gonna love. You know me. I'm the ultimate example of forethought and for not not really at all. Y'all know I'm uh, I'm spontaneous and jackrabbit around like crazy. Uh, but this one, this one I have had um, held back and specifically for our one year anniversary because it's a super banger. So it's going to be dope. Um, is there a height recommendation that fits all cycles of growth if you have the proper P -P PPFD? Getting the proper PPFD is kind of where, where, you know, that's where, uh, that's where I stay and that's where I live is if my PPFD is right, and my PAR is right, then... February the 12th. Okay, so that'll be next week. Okay, that'll coincide with, uh, huh? Next month. next month, February 12th. Oh, God, this is January. Okay, but I knew it was around here, except I'm just a month off in a couple days. No, no baby. Uh, so February 12th, one year anniversary of Dream Beans. We're going to have another customer blowout extravaganza, I think. Um, I think that's going to be a good one uh, to do. We'll have a drop. Uh, drop for that. Um, bring on some cool folks. All that good stuff. Maybe. Oh, hell, Mo, get with me. That could be. That could be the the when we do the official uh, talk about it Tuesday. Daily Whacker. Um, talk about it Tuesday. Mo ha Mo grows light company. Mo grows light co. Or whatever the hell he told me what the name of it was, but I can't. I got ADD, and I can't remember. Um, <clears throat> Edgar Esquivel. Glad you made it. I got a buddy in Austin with the last name Esgivel. Uh, boy, those dads got me. Uh, let's 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 regroup. Anybody here got any questions about lighting? Oh, hey, Steve, Stephen Dixon. Uh, that's not a bad uh, not a bad t team to be a fan of. Purdue kicks ass in basketball the last couple years. Um. Yeah, we're all stoners, so a month is close enough. Mo's indoor lighting. There you go. I knew he'd chime in. Oscar Perez. If you need new beans, you're in the right place. Head over to dreambeans.net and grab yourself a pack. Or two. Or a multi-pack of three. Chris Whittington. Love that you chimed in with that. So February the 12th is a Monday. 
So February the 13th, which is also Valentine's Day, so we're going to have a one-year anniversary. We're going to have a drop. Mo's going to have his thing. Y'all be on the lookout. February's coming in hard. We're going to come in hot, hard, and heavy in February. Oh, Hell yeah. Valentine's Day. Uh, what? I said I'm going to... Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Trimming a diamond milk as we speak. These buds are amazing. I believe it, Ace. You're doing a good job. Ha, <laughs> that's great. Welcome to Moe's. Yes, I like that. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Multi-spectrum. Ah, there you go, Michael. Mikey Dubs. Uh, multi-spectrum. Yeah. <clears throat> Full spectrum lights are better than not. <laughs> um, light spectrum, again, is one of those complex topics that I understand it from a scientific perspective and understand what the different spectrums are are supposed to do, but all, all the literature and everything we all have is toward, geared towards photo period dependent cannabis, and there's not a whole lot that's been done as far as spectrum analysis and how it actually relates and triggers and differs in day neutral cannabis. So I just never really paid attention to it, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> light, what light meter do you guys use? Hey, Joey, that's a damn good question. Shout out to Joey. Good job. Uh, uh, photo bio, F. P-H-O-T-O-B-I-O. -O -O. You can get them on um, Amazon. Last time I checked, they're about 35, uh, 135 bucks. UVA, UVB, UVA bars. <coughs> As someone who grows at 8,000 feet elevation, I can definitely say and 100% have data to support that higher UV levels do increase terpene concentrations. I 100% am a supporter of UVA um, UVA bars and adding them if you can. Um, new drop needs a new cover photo. Eh? Sh uh, needs a new cover photo. Okay, uh, shoot, uh, Jeffrey, shoot me a DM. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh. <coughs> 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 How many hours do you run a <coughs> UV for? <coughs> I know you're gonna. People are gonna freak out, but all of them. <laughs> now, I run CO2. I have natural UV, which there is still. I'm still w w waiting to see some science. There you go, AJ. I believe it. That I think as long as you've got your your VPD dialed in and your stuff, you can run UV along with it. Because again, exactly. Yeah, the you, 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 the sun. You know, like I said, up here where I grow. Uh, our UV concentrations are one and a half to two times what they are at sea level naturally outside. Okay. <clears throat> and so they're high. All right. They're super high. And um, I can say from the data that I have from growing in uh, at sea level in Texas without UV supplementation, uh, I can just, I can say that just, and, and, and there's a lot of extra dental fact. I never, I haven't actually done a, uh, control control group test on UVA, but I can just have the anecdotal data. There's just a lot more. Um, and um, what is the true watt? If the light says it's 600 watts, it depends on the brand. If it says 600 watts, then it's probably 600 watts. Um, if it just has a number and just says like 6,000, then no. If it actually says watts, then yeah. There you go, Mo. Good job. Thank you, buddy. Then run them for 25... Yeah, and if you haven't, Robert, uh, if you haven't been running them um, all the time, I would slowly introduce them because you can. If you just start blasting them and you haven't been blasting them with UV, then yes, you can give them a sunburn and you can get some leaf ble bleaching. Uh, I would increase it slowly, I'd say probably an hour a day each day until you haven't running uh, all the time. UVA and UVB, just different wavelengths, and they essentially do trigger different stuff in the in the plant. <clears throat> both of them, both of them are, you know, both of them happen naturally and both of them are good in the right concentrations. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's where, that's where we're, that's where we're at. Yes, Brian as well. Get the, uh, can't wait for big, can't wait for spring, big yellow. Yeah, can't wait for spring as well. For sure, he's doing four hours a day, new grow starting, lights run 24-7. There you go. Uh, Robert, I would say that just, um, get uh go an hour a day increase until you're at 24 and not too close at first as michael just said 
Uh, should I start my being in a mood before I move them outside the spring? Hell yeah, if you can, Randy. Fuck yeah. I also do, because you were up there in Alaska, I do want you to do just some natural stuff with me for those testers. But yes, absolutely. For any stuff you're going to smoke and you're wanting to get big or anything like that, absolutely, man. The first three weeks, four weeks of an autoflower or a day neutral cannabis plant's life is the most important and getting them as big as you possibly can in that time frame is always going to be your best bet to have a large yield. So yes. Um, so what I meant was those creatures some of us have been created. Oh, yes! Hey, that's a damn good idea. Good job, Jeff. Thanks. Sorry, I wasn't I wouldn't following what you were saying. Yes! I... Very, I am going to have a customer uh, art thing where I put up the name of the strain and I'm going to let y'all, I'm not going to give any kind of descriptors to it. I'm just going to give the name and then everybody who's been messing around with the Bings and the Mid Journeys and all the AI stuff. Um, Charles Gregg, you can get a photo bio uh, a PPFD meter for about 130 bucks on Amazon. Uh, yes, I'm going to do a, a, a customer uh, initiated and customer generated art for the next strain. Maybe even the next couple because y'all have all been doing so good. Uh, what's the difference between a 600 watt LED and a 600 watt HPS? In my opinion, it's penetration and efficiency. Okay. So whenever you run a 600 watt HPS, there's a whole... And, and guys, just to let everybody know, I still run HPSs. Say hi, Vanna Wife. Hi. <laughs> There's Vanna Wife. Oh, whoa, I changed the color. All right, cool. Hey, so I... I st do a what? competition for next week's drop for them to pick. That's exactly what, that's what I just oh, said. Sorry, I was, I was Vanna Wife chiming in. I was in the uh, 600 watt HPS. So I still run HPSs, but I do it because I live in a very, 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 very cold place and I need it for the heat. I need it for the heat. So whenever you take one of those watts out of that wall and you run it up through that ballast and it goes up through that, like, it hits that filament. There's a certain portion of that watt that's converted to light and a certain portion of that watt that is cre uh, converted into heat, all right? LEDs are much more efficient at converting that watt into light versus heat. That's why they don't get as hot, all right? And I, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that's why I, um, uh, but like I said, that's why I need them out there in one of the greenhouses because I, it's, it gets down to negative 40 here. Uh, so I need the heat. Most folks are trying to not have the heat, especially if you're growing in a tent, okay? The next thing that's going to be the ma major difference is penetration, all right? When you have a 1,000-watt HPS, you have 18 inches of full PPFD penetration. After you get below 18 inches, the PPFD starts to weaken and dissipate at an exponential level, okay? A lot of big words there. What does that mean? It means the light gets weaker as it goes further down, all right? With LEDs, the penetration is much better, again, because much more of the actual wattage is converted into uh, light than into heat. So those are the two main differences, okay? The main difference is, is that, that for most practical folks with all that jarble and garbage and all that mumble jumble, is LEDs are much cheaper to run, is the main, is the, the main thing. Um, uh, yes, absolutely, Tony. Tony Greenwald, shoot me a DM. I'm always available. Uh, yes, you are welcome, Robert. Uh, so that's, uh, that's probably gonna, that's probably gonna end it. Uh, what's my favorite LED? Well, up to, t up until this point, it's been HLG or Foch. Foch has been my favorite, but HLG for everybody else because the cross prohibitive. Now, today, as I sit here today, Moe's Indoor, Moe's Grows. Moe's, damn it, Mo. Shit, I'm gonna get it. Moe's Indoor Lighting. Moe's Indoor Lighting Co. Moe's, Mo Grows Lows. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, what do I think about terrarium heaters and tents? Uh, there's better options. Um, if you need a heater in a tent, get a bigger light. <laughs> uh, no, there's, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of different, uh, options. If you're going to need, if you need heat in a tent, first of all, I want to know where you're growing. Um, whew. Uh, yeah, that's about what ours, uh, that's what about ours, ours about run, uh, Charles. Welcome to Mo's. Mo knows grows. Dang it, Joe, you're late again. We're about to sign off. Dang it. Joe, get here in time. Very fun explanation. You know, hey, that's what I try to do. I try to provide a little bit of levity, a little bit of comedic relief, and a little bit of personability to this uh, complex to topics and things that can be intimidating out there on the interwebs. 
Tiny cottage with a tiny wood stove. Yeah, I'm going to say that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, you're probably in a cold spot if you've got a little wood stove. Um, uh, sh shoot me a DM. Maybe I'll, maybe I can come up with something because I, I don't like terrarium heaters. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, who got p plan of the week? A whole bunch of people. Lorenzo, you weren't one of them. Not this week, anyway. Uh, I did it at the beginning, Lorenzo. And Dan! Oh, shit. Okay, we're, yep, it's dab time. It's sign-off time. It's dab time. Let's go! So thanks, as always, folks. Thank you for tuning in, tuning out, dropping in and dropping out, or whatever Timothy Leary used to say. Oh, boy, I hope I've got enough. Baby, will you bring me that small torch? I'm not going to leave these people disappointed. I said I was going said I was going to do a big dab. L-M-L-M-F. Not sure what that means, Joe Green. T-M-F-F? -F? Is that going to be... That's uh, the freebies you're talking about? Actually... Do you need some new change? I got it. Okay. Uh... So, yeah. No, there wasn't a drop this week, Ed, but next week there will be. We will get y'all a good strain coming. Y'all have a great night. Is Granite Haze from Speedrun is something? Yep, that is. So, Granite, Granite Haze from Speedrun is my bear's breath. My bear's breath was a Stilton special back cross with the three bears OG, uh that I that I crossed to a uh, great dosy breath. And I took that. I gave that to Ben. And Ben selected it over four or five generations for the extremely haze profile that it had. And so the granite haze is a bear's breath, but it was his selection through the process. Let's get a dab going. Let's get it. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> oh shit, I hope her ever stuck around for that one. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Chris Thomas, I use I use Trollmaster. I, I've had all of the, I've seen all of those, but I've always used Trollmaster in AC Infinity before. For my monitor. <laughs> How rare is the knuckle breath? It's a freebie from Multiverse. And once they're gone, they'll gone be gone forever. I'll never bring it back. So pretty rare. Okay. <laughs> All right. We love y'all. Well, peace out. If anybody needs me, make sure to get at me. Otherwise, we'll see you out there in the Dream Peen Support Center, and we'll see you out there on Talk About It Tuesday next week. Woohoo!